today's lesson is on parabolas. And I know that you think and do know things about uh, parabola and how to graph it. But today's lesson is like going to put you on Mars a little bit compared to where you thought you were. Today we're going to look at a parabola in terms of a conic section and not in terms of a quadratic function. So if you have a cone and you slice the cone up to down, the cross section of that cone that you cut out is a parabola. So I wonder if you can see that cross section there and what's shaded. So we are going to look at a parabola, not in terms of a quadratic function, but as a conic section, as a section of a cone and mathematically how we look at it. This is going to be awesome and crazy at the same time. So a parabola is the locus of points such that each point is equal distance to a fixed point called the focus and a line called the directrix. So this parabola, the shape of it is something you're familiar with. We're going to have a focus like we did for the hyperbola and ellipse. We're going to have something new called the directrix. Now the directrix is a line and it's perpendicular to the axis of symmetry. Today, the parabola could actually go up or down, or a parabola could go right or left. That's completely different. Before, a quadratic function can only go up or down, but if it's a conic section, it can go up, down, left, or right. So it has more options. So the axis of symmetry always splits the parabola in half. The directrix is a line that's perpendicular to it. Now. We're going to understand how to find the focus in a minute. But once you know where the focus is, the distance from the vertex to the focus is the same distance from the vertex to the directrix. And if you take a point, any point on the directrix and a point on the parabola, so first of all, a point on the parabola, if you go straight down to the directrix, if you go straight to the focus, the distance, that is, will always be the same. That's a mathematical distance of the parabola. It requires a directrix, a focus, and a point on the parabola. So if we have a point on the parabola and measure the distance to the focus, the straight down distance to the directrix, or if it's sideways, it would be the straight right or left distance to it, that distance will always be the same no matter what point you pick on the parabola. So you pick a point and you measure it to the focus and the directrix and that distance will always be the same. That's what makes it a parabola in terms of a conic section. All right, there are two types of parabolas. I said they're either going to open up or down or they're going to open up left or right. That's something brand new. Now, the focus always lies inside the parabola. The directrix is a line outside the parabola. That's a new word for today. The directrix, like tricks is for kids, uh, and axis of symmetry, which you do know, are perpendicular. The vertex is, and now we're going to use absolute value. So whatever, we're going to understand how to find the value of P. Whatever that value is, that's how many units away the focus and directrix is from the vertex, both positive and negative. Now, this is a new word too, the lattice rectum. That's a mathematical word, just in case you think it's something else. The lattice rectum is a segment, a line segment, that passes through the focus with endpoints on the parabolic curve and always has a length of 4p. That's going to help us understand what p equals. So the lattice rectum, if I looked up here, if you drew a line that went through the focus, with endpoints on the parabola, that line I just drew, that line segment's called the lattice rectum. Same thing here. If I drew a line going straight down through the focus with endpoints on the parabola, that's called the lattice rectum. And that distance is 4p. We're going to have an understanding of that to be able to understand what, uh, what p equals to help us find the focus and uh, directrix. So let's write down a new way to write an equation of a parabola. So today, if it folds up or down, it's going to be x subtract h squared. Whatever a would normally, whatever that number in front would be, would be 4p, and then y minus k. So you can see inside the parentheses, hk is going to be the vertex. 
Oh, and it opens up if uh, four if p is uh, greater than zero, and it would open down if p is uh, less than zero. This y would be squared. Remember, k always goes with y, and h always goes with x. But if the y is squared, then it goes right or left. And again, if p is greater than zero, it opens right, and if p is less than zero, it opens left. This is a completely new way of understanding that parabola. This is kind of an old, uh, a more mature math way to understand a parabola rather than a young math way that you might learn in ninth or 10th grade and so on. All right, turn the page. So we're gonna practice graphing. And the first one will be uncomfortable and then we're just gonna kind of go from that. And we're gonna do it together. So there's no expectation that you're gonna do it by yourself. There's no exam that goes with it. We're just going to learn it, okay, and relax. So first of all, write the equation in standard form. And then determine the type of parabola. So graph the vertex, solve for p to determine the directrix of direction of the opening. Use the absolute value of p to graph the focus and directrix. And then use the absolute value for p to graph the endpoints uh, of the lattice rectum. And then sketch it. So let's go one at a time. So first of all, what type of parabola is this? So how do I know? So because x is squared, it's going to open up or down. Look in front of the parentheses uh, for y. And if you see that, is that a positive or negative number, obviously? So it's positive. So this one's going to open up. So that's the first thing I notice. So this is vertical and up. That's what I found out so far. The vertex is that positive four and negative three. So that's simple. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three. So four and negative three. There's the vertex. Now I wanna find the focus and the uh, directrix and so on. I already know the axis of symmetry. That's X equals four. That comes from the X coordinate of the vertex. So I can draw that in. Next, to find the focus and the lattice rectum and the directrix, what am I going to do? So I want you to take the constant that it's in front of the y. That's 2. That number is equal to 4p. So that's the length of the lattice rectum. But first I need to find where the focus is to begin with. So the full length of the, of the lattice rectum is 2. So to solve for p means I divide by 4. So when I divide by 4, 2 divided by 4 P is one half, which means from the vertex, I'm going to go up a half, there's my focus, and I'm going to go down a half, and there's my directrix. Remember that directrix is always perpendicular to the axis of symmetry. So that instead of x equals, it's going to be y equals. And I just went down a half from the y value. So if I go down a half, that's negative 3.5. Next, I want to be able to find, we know where the uh, vertex is. We're now going to find two more points in our parabola using the uh, lattice uh, rectum. So we know the full length of the lattice rectum is 2. So from the focus, we're going to go 1 to the right and 1 to the left. And it's half there, right? So 1 to the right and 1 to the left, that makes a distance of 2. What are those endpoints I just wrote down? So first of all, the focus, the x value stayed the same, but we went up a half. So that's negative 2.5 because we went up a half. The endpoints of the lattice rectum, that's going to involve negative 2.5, but the vertex or the focus, the x value, we're going to add 1 and subtract 1 to make that distance of 2. So when I subtract 1, that's 3 and negative 2.5. When I add 1, that's 5 and negative 2.5. That's what these points are. They're at 3 and negative 2.5 and 5 and negative 2.5. Now, I'm not going to find more points for my parabola. I'm happy just understanding that concept. So I'm going to just draw using those points. And I finish drawing my parabola. I know, right? A little awkward, something you've never done before, not 
it's still a quadratic function in the sense, but we're seeing it as a conic section rather than a quadratic function. All right, number two. Again, we're doing this together, so it's going to be okay. Step one. Which term is squared, the y or the x? Look carefully. Because it's the y, it's going to go sideways. And because it's horizontal, I look at the value in front of x and see if it's positive or negative. So first of all, this is horizontal. And because x is positive in front, it's going to open to the right. If it was negative, it would open to the left. Now the vertex is right there. It's at negative 2. And because there's nothing adding or subtracting there in parentheses, that number you don't see is 0. So it's negative 2 and 0. Ah, let me not make that mistake. So the x coordinate is 0 and the y coordinate is negative 2. Easy to make a little mistake then just correct it. Axis of symmetry, I know, because it goes sideways, so I'm going to find 0 and negative 2. It's right there. Because it goes sideways, the axis of symmetry actually goes horizontally because it's horizontal. Horizontal means y equals. So the axis of symmetry is y equals, and it's the y value of the vertex. So it's y equals negative 2. Now, the directrix is going to be x equals when we get there. All right, next I need to solve for p. So I'm going to take 8 and make it equal to 4p to find that value. So I already know the width of the full lattice rectum is 8. So from endpoint to endpoint, the distance is 8. Divide by 4, and p is equal to 2. So from the vertex, I'm going to go to the right 2. That's my focus. And I'm going to go to the left 2. That is my directrix. So here's my directrix. Here is my axis of symmetry. And I'm actually, so you don't get confused, I'm going to make it at an x. That's the focus where the x is. So the focus where the x is, I want 2 to the right. So from here, that's 2 to the right and negative 2. Next, I'm going to take from the focus and understand the full length of the lattice rectum is 8. That means I'm going to split it in half. So 4 up and 4 down to make 8. So from the focus, 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. Those are endpoints of the lattice rectum right there. But we also know those points I just came up with are on my parabola. So I'm going to curve through my parabola using those points I just came up with. and you graph the parabola. So the endpoints of the lattice rectum from the focus went up and down. So focus, it's going to stay at 2, but I went up 4. So negative 2 plus 4. The x value stayed the same, but I went down 4 as well. So negative 2 subtract 4. And I have my points. And the directrix is x equals, and it's 2 to the left of the focus from the vertex. So 2 to the left. So it was 0. So 2 to the left means x equals negative 2. Let's do this again. Together, we're better. 3. Let's go one step at a time here. So for number 3, I see that y is squared. That means it's horizontal. I also know that in front of the x, it's negative. So that means it's going to open up to the left because it's negative. I can see my vertex. It's at positive 5 and positive 1. The focus, endpoints, and so on. What are we going to do next? Find what p equals. So we're going to make 4p equal to 16 because it's the absolute value of that, right, in terms of what I'm looking at, in terms of distance here and there. So I'm going to do the absolute value of that. So that means 4p equals 16. So p, if you divide it by 4, is 4. So first of all, the length of the lattice rectum is 16. That means 8 and 8. The distance from the vertex to the focus and the directrix is 4. So let's just put this all together. So first of all, where's 5, 1? 
one, two, three, four, five, and one. Done. If I want to find the axis of symmetry, I just draw a horizontal line that goes through it. That horizontal line is the axis of symmetry. It splits the parabola in half because it's sideways. So that's y equals the axis of symmetry, and it's y equals 1. My directrix is going to be 4. In this case, it's going to be 4 to the right because it's outside the parabola. So because the parabola folds this way, if I go 4 to the left, 1, 2, 3, 4, I'm going to put an x here. 4 to the left, I just did a focus because it folds to the left. The focus is inside. 4 to the left. That's 1, 1. That's where the focus is. If I go 4 to the right, 1, 2, 3, 4, that's my directrix, which is perpendicular to my axis of symmetry. So 4 to the right means 9. So it's x equals 9 from the vertex, 4 to the right. The endpoints of my lattice rectum. So from the focus, remember what 4p equals? 16. So we're going to count 8 and 8. So we're going to count 8 up. We're going to count 8 down. So the endpoints then would be 1 and 9 and 1 and negative 7. Connect the endpoints. There's your lattice rectum. Now we're going to draw our parabola that goes through these endpoints from the vertex. And there's your parabola. All right, number four. Two more to graph. Let's start. Which one's squared? The x is squared. And because the x is squared, that means this is vertical. And what you see in front here is a negative a quarter. Now, we're going to write this in a way that looks like what it should look like. So the quadratic should actually just be by itself. If there is a number here to write it properly, we're going to undo this so it's on the right side. So to undo negative a quarter, we're going to multiply both sides by negative 4. So when you multiply by negative 4, it undoes this and leaves it by itself. And then we're going to put parentheses around here. So we're not going to distribute, and the negative 4 will just be in front. And I do that so you notice that in front of the linear part is negative. So for vertical, that means it's going to fold down. I also know then that 4p is equal to negative 4. So all that's going to be helpful. So let's just start one at a time. Where is the vertex then if I look here? The x value is 2, and the y value is 4. What's the axis of symmetry? It's x equals what the x-coordinate is, which is 2. Let's put that on our graph. So 2 and 4. And then the axis of symmetry that cuts the parabola in half. The focus. So the absolute value of negative 4 is just positive 4. So when I divide, p is equal to 1. That means from the vertex, I'm going to go up 1. Because this folds down, when I go up 1, that's going to be the directrix because it's outside the parabola. So that directrix is y equals 3. No, up 1 from, sorry, from the vertex. So if I add 1 to the y value of the vertex, up 1 would be y equals 5. To find the focus, we're going to go down 1 from the vertex. So if I go down 1, then it's at 2 and 3, and I'm going to put a little x there for the focus. The full length of the lattice rectum, 4p, is 4. So that means I'm going to split it in half. So that means 2 to the right. That means 2 to the left. And now you have what you need. So we're going to connect that together. That's your direct, uh, your lattice rectum. 
the ends there of that segment are on the parabola. So what are those endpoints to put here? So from the focus, I went two to the right. That's four. From the focus, I went two to the left. That's zero. Then when I connect with the vertex, I can then just draw my parabola using those three points. All right, one more to graph. So first of all, is this in the right form to look at? So when I look at it, which one is quadratic? Which is the squared term? It's y. That means it's horizontal. Now, I don't know if it's up or down until we get this by itself. So if I want the quadratic part isolated, how do I undo 1 tenth? Is I multiply both sides by 10. And then keep parentheses around the x minus 3. You don't need to distribute. So now I can know that it's going to be horizontal and it's going to go to the right. I also know that 4p is equal to 10. Now, 4 doesn't go into 10 evenly, so it's going to be a decimal or a fraction when we do that next part. But let's just start with what we have. So this is in the right form. So the vertex is at 3 and negative 2. 1, 2, 3, and negative 2. I know that it's horizontal, so that means the axis of symmetry is horizontal. That's going to be y equals, and it's the y value of the vertex, which is negative 2. Now, I need to know this part. So what's the length of the lattice rectum? 10. I need to know that. And then what is p equal? Well, when you divide by 4, I'm going to simplify it down. That's 5 divided by 2, or 2.5 would be the answer. So 5 over 2 or 5 divided by 2 is 2.5. So from the vertex, we're going to count 2 to the right, 2.5. That is going to be my focus, because it's folding right. 2 and a half to the left, 1, 2 and a half right here. That's going to be my directrix. So let's see what those are. So the focus, 2 and a half to the right from the vertex. That's 5 and a half and negative 2. Well, the directrix, 2 and a half to the left. So 3, 2 and a half is just 1 half. So it's 0. 0.5 is the directrix. Now the end points of the lattice rectum. So from the focus, we're going to go 5 up and 5 down to make 10. So from the focus, 5 up. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So those are the endpoints of the lattice rectum. Put those on. Now, what are those endpoints? So from the focus, which is at 5.5, I'm going to add 5.5 and negative 2. I stay at 5.5. But I'm going to add 5, that's 3, and I'm going to subtract 5 down, that's negative 7. So 5.53 and 5.5, negative 7. Now take the vertex through the endpoints and make your parabola. That is so brand new to you, and I understand it. And it's a little awkward, maybe a lot awkward. We're going to have homework tomorrow to be able to practice again. This is a different more mature, more mathematical, more pre-calculus, more university way of seeing the parabolas that you need to know. All right, last part of the lesson. Rewrite the equation of the parabola in standard form. Then determine the direction, up, down, left, or right. So here we go. So first of all, the quadratic term. We need that to be positive. So y squared is going to stay on the left. There is no other y terms here. So what I'm going to do is everything else is going to go to the right side. So I'm going to subtract 12x and subtract 24. So y squared is perfect. I don't need to do anything with that. But to the x, I need to factor out so that x is 1 inside the parentheses. 
So whatever that number is, I need to factor it out. So if with x, I need to factor out a negative 12. In this case, it goes in evenly. But even if it didn't go in evenly, I still would need to factor it out. And if it's a decimal answer or a fraction, then that's what it is. Now, 12 obviously goes into 24, 2. And know that when you factor out a negative, it's going to change this sign. So this is going to be plus 2. So for me, do you know what the vertex is? That's what I'm going to do. Negative 2 and 0. And does it open up, up, down, left, right? Well, the y is squared. It's negative. So this one's going to open up to the left. So you're going to be at negative 2, 0, and it goes left. Number 7. Which one's squared? And it needs to be positive. So positive x squared is where it is. It also has a negative 10x. They belong together. I'm going to add 6y, and I still have a negative 31 on the right side. That's going to be separated. So we separate the variables. Next, I need to complete the square for x. So to remind you of that, you're going to divide by 2. So negative 10 divided by 2, that's negative 5, and square it. So divide by 2 and square. And whatever I do to the right side, I have to do to the uh, left side. I have to do the right side. So I add 25 here. I add 25 there. Now I'm going to factor. So this is going to be x subtract 5 squared when you factor it. On the right side, I'm going to combine like terms. So negative 31 plus 25 is negative 6. And then I'm going to factor 2. So I'm going to factor out the 6 and be left with y minus 1. So if I put it together, I have x subtract 5 squared, 6, y minus 1. So the vertex here would be at 5 and positive 1. And because it's positive, this one opens up. So if x is squared, it's up or down. If y is squared, it's left or right. Positive means up or right. And negative means left or down. Number eight, two more to go. Write this equation properly. So we have x squared and 2x. I'm going to subtract 20y and subtract 61. I'm going to separate it. Next, I'm going to complete the square for x. So to complete the square, I'm going to divide by 2. So 2 divided by 2 is 1, and then square it. And what I do to the left side, I need to do to the right side. So I'm going to add 1 to both sides. Now I'm going to factor. So this is x plus 1 squared. And on the right side, negative 61 plus 1 is negative 60. I'm going to continue and factor the right side. So I'm going to factor out a negative 20. Be careful when you factor out a negative. This is going to change the plus, And 20 goes into 60 three times. Now it's in the right form. So if I asked you for the vertex, it would be at negative 1 and negative 3. Because x is squared, it's up or down. Which one is it? Obviously, it's down. Last one. Do you want to try this one? Press pause and then see if you did it correctly. So y squared, then we're going to subtract 14y. This is separating the variables. We're going to add 2x, and the constant's going to go with the linear term. The quadratic we're going to keep by itself. Next, we're going to complete the square. So to complete the square, we're going to divide by 2. That's 7, negative 7, and square it. So 7, negative 7 squared is 49. That number needs to be added to both sides. Next, we're going to complete the factor of this. So that's y minus 7 squared. And on the right side, combine like terms. So that's plus 4. Lastly, we're going to factor the right side. So just factor out the greatest common factor, that 2, and you're left with x plus 2. So in this case, the vertex would be at negative 2 and 7. And because y is squared, it's going to open left or right. Notice that it's positive, so it's going to open up to the right. And that's it. So there's your lesson for today. A brand new way to think of parabolas as a conic section. Brand new vocabulary like directrix and uh, lattice rectum. Uh, so I'm proud of you that you lasted to the end of the lesson. And I know that we're going to do this again 
on the next one on the homework to be able to get a better understanding of this. Mr. G Math, over and out. And until next time.